All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, excited to be again welcoming on an individual, but this time taken to that CFFC stage. It goes at CFFC 109 on May the 27th, a bantamweight bout between Efren Escareno and Tisha Guthro. And always good getting to talk to Tisha before some big fights. How's things going, man? Seems like your day's proceeding pretty well so far. Uh, sorry, I lost you. Did I say that again? I was just saying, it seems like your day's going so pretty well so far. How are you feeling leading to this big CFFC debut and all? I'm feeling good, brother. Um, focused. Uh, ready to go. Just, I can't wait to be in there. And I'm not looking to get out quick. That's interesting. So there's part of you that wants to get in, like, a little more cage time, like, get, like, a few rounds in there kind of thing, as opposed to maybe, say, a quick finish? Sorry, it's kind of sketching out a bit. Yeah, just looking to, you know, you know, keep active and stuff like that and, like, have a little more cage time. Like, that has, you know, prominence over, like, a quick decision or a quick finish, rather. Yes. Yeah. I like uh, I like the cage time. I like to be in there. I like to feel my guy. I like to break him down slow. Yeah, and it seems like you've been doing a lot of great things lately. Like, this isn't, like, super, super recent, per se, but, like, relative to the last time we talked, like, getting represented by you know, Danny Rubenstein and everything like that. So it seems like it's paying off getting some big opportunities going lately. Oh, yeah, man. Um, yeah, working with uh, – so Jake, uh, he's under Ruby. He ended up managing me. Um, it's been a good relationship. I met him in Vegas last year, actually around this time when we went up to train at Syndicate. And, um, yeah, no, I met him. He actually took the team out for dinner. Good fucking guy. And I was under a different one, Jackson Wink, and um, they just weren't doing it for me. Um, so I went with Jake because I knew him personally, right? It's a good relationship. Yeah, well, I didn't know there was that, like, personalized kind of tie-in. That makes it even sweeter. I mean, like, you want to ultimately be doing good business with people you get along with. I mean, that's kind of the dream, right? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, yeah, since I know him, I was like, it works even better. Trust him, right? Yeah, well, a ton of momentum, and it's really cool to see. Like, I was seeing the latest, you know, merch drop there and stuff like that. Like, how cool is it to see that? Like, how much part of, how much part of like, the creative vision and just the iconography and just everything, like, do you have a say in? It seems like you're very heavily entrenched into, like, offering insights and all that. Yeah, I'm a big part of that. Like, uh, actually, the logo came from my first ever tattoo, which is on my hand. Uh the girl who did it is uh, Joe. She actually, she's one of my sponsors as well, Bond Street um, Tattoo, shout out. And uh, yeah, she's a great artist. And um, I just, the idea I thought of my logo, so the logo is actually for my uh, for my business too, my house training lab. So um, I just gave her that, my the wolf on my hand and then just gave her some other details like my house and some tomahawks and she did it up beautifully. Yeah, it came out really well, man. I was definitely digging that there. And then also some big sponsorship action there, too. I was seeing you got the Six Nation Grown going on there. That looks like a good one. When did that all get going? Uh, that one I got right at the beginning of the camp. Um, yeah, just my native buddy. He comes out here and trains. And then uh, I just hit him up and was like, you interested in sponsorship? I'm all about my weed. And uh, yeah, he's a big supporter. I love all the support. And uh, especially from six nations i'm from six nations so um like to represent right yeah i thought it was cool on that level too like you seem like you enjoy it for like the recuperation and stuff like that like the cannabis i'm talking about but the cultural kind of tie in there it seems like it's checking off multiple boxes for you there yeah no for sure it's huge and um that's what i'm trying to bring to uh, my fight career let everyone know like the shirts i have they also say uh, native pride born savage just letting people know right yeah, it's cool to see, man, representing and everything like that. And I thought it was also cool seeing that amazing tattoo tribute you had to your mother there. Like, obviously, my condolences with the situation there. But that was a beautiful piece of art that I think will really serve as a great way to, you know, offer up memories for someone who had a great life and all. Thank you, man. It means a lot. Um, yeah, I was going to get it for her before her passing, and then she passed during it. So then I was like, I already had the tattoo book, so I just threw her name in there and... Like, uh, she gave me a tomahawk peace pipe when I was a little kid, and um, I just wanted to get that for her. And then I only put her birth, not her passing, because she's always with me. So, 
No, it was good. She's always with me, right? As I enter that cage and as I walk through this earth till the day I pass and move on and my spirit goes off in the spirit world. And that's that. Yeah, well, I saw that and like the actual piece is definitely beautiful for sure. And yeah, losing a parent is definitely a, you know, big weight for sure, man. But I mean, super proud of what you're doing now and everything like that. And I mean, clearly the career is advancing and progressing at a really good rate there. And I mean, I follow you on social media, you're putting in that work literally every single day. I mean, if it's recuperation, if it's the strength and conditioning. So like, just like, how cool is it to see this journey and everything like that? Are you able to stop and smell the roses even for a little bit? Like, obviously, you're wanting to progress. And I imagine a lot more goals to achieve. But is there like that occasional sense of like, you know what, I'm really achieving my dream. And then obviously, you have to pivot back to the hard work. But do you have those certain moments at all? Um, like I'm already successful the way I see it, how far, I like it, success is where you start and where you've came, like where you get to, and right now I've already been successful, yeah. just becoming a professional athlete, um, yeah, all the work, hard work's paying off, like fucking debut at CFFC on UFC Fight Pass, but everything's there, I just gotta keep my mind focused, which that's always on point, so now it's just getting the weight off entering the cage and having some fun yeah and it must be cool to get out there and be able to compete there because it seemed like you were fired up to compete at that lfa 125 card and then that you know february bout kind of fell through there so i imagine you're you know stoked to be getting out there and actually you know competing and stuff like that because that seemed like it was kind of tight to the fight event date as well too yeah it's just been too long since i've been in there it's gonna be that's why i want to i want to take my time there enjoy it have some fun let this guy know whose house it is and uh, let him know I'm a violent motherfucker, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that last fight was great too, though. I mean, just kind of briefly touching on that, like what was it like to get the, you know, big finish out in St. Catharines, especially like being one of the core, like OGs over at Niagara top team and everything like that. I would think that was a really cool night. Oh, it was great, man. The feeling, vibes, the energy I got from the whole entire event, everyone there, my mom, dad showed up, like... All my family members, it was, it was great. The whole team, just everyone, all my boys too. Like, it was good. It was a good feeling. And I like, it was different than the last time I fought in, uh, in Niagara. Like, this time I, I kind of took the crowd in and took their energy in. Last time I didn't want to feel the crowd and I just wanted to go in there and get it over with. But this time it just, whew, it's feeling different. Well, the performance showed, right? It's a violent, violent, violent one. Like, um, I knew he was going to be really tough, so I had to bring I had to bring everything to him. Like, I knew he was tough. Skill-wise, I knew I had him everywhere, anywhere we went. But um, the grappling clearly showed, and uh, that uh, smash, smash, like <laughs> the Russians would say, that, that was that. It's kind of an interesting distinction, though. Like, you talk about, like, fighting in the Niagara region at one point, and you were kind of, like, blocking out the crowd a little bit, whereas this time it's almost like you're harnessing, like, a Goku spirit bomb kind of dynamic there. Like, what do you think led to that sort of shift? Like, why was there that, I guess, difference in interfacing with the crowd between those Niagara-centric fights? Like, where do you think that comes from? Uh, I think it comes from my more spirit... Uh, I've been through a very spiritual journey this past year and a half, and, um just meditation and visualization and just understanding that we're in this universe and we can take and give this universe is we are what we think that's the way i see things so i had to think that going into that in the meridians tonight with all these eyes and everyone i knew and just feeling all their energy was all positive right and so i just feel like i had to take that in and just really say answer the question it's all spiritual like i've been just more in depth with getting deep into the mind and overthinking things and understanding things. And, yeah, mentally, I'm fucking bulletproof. Like, I was before, but now, the older I get, the more I understand martial arts and I understand life. It's just things are coming easier and I'm a lot happier of a person. Yo, know, that's awesome to hear, man. I mean, you should be able to, you know, feel that from what you're doing and stuff like that. And good to hear there's that multifaceted kind of approach and everything like that because yeah if your mind and your spirit isn't right you're not going to be able to physically execute when you're out there yes 100 percent. but yeah just i'm curious like in terms of what you might 
think about your opponent heading into this one like obviously he is a bit more like localized cffc kind of experience but like commensurate professional experience overall there like what have you seen from maybe doing a level of tape study on him that you i guess think he does well in a stylistic proclivity kind of sense or are you mostly just having like the coaches at ntt kind of break that down and you're focusing on your own refinement Mm, no, I do all my fight study myself. I make up my own fight plans, and I'll sit down with the coaches and explain what I think I should be doing. And usually, they come back with the exact same plan. We're pretty much on the same wave. They trust my fight IQ and my game planning. And then, if they have anything they want to tune up, we just fix that. <laughs> but I really love my coaches that they believe in. I've had over almost fifty fights now, from amateur to pro, and I understand the game very deeply. I'm only four and one, but I think my knowledge is far beyond that. The way I I do a lot of fight study, um, but this guy I've studied him. He's a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. That's really all he's got. He's Mexican, so he's gonna be really tough. Comes forward with heavy pressure, but his striking is not nearly on my level. Um, his wrestling is not even close on my level. He's gonna be shooting, but how is he gonna take me down without wrestling? So he's got that brown belt. But Really, what is he going to do with it if he can't get me down? He's going to fucking probably jump guard. And, yeah, that's what he's probably going to do. But anywhere this fight goes, I feel completely confident. And mentally, I know. So with this guy, there's a little story behind us. He said no to me twice last year. And then said no to me for the LFA one at the beginning of this year. So, uh... Then I messaged him, call him out. You know what I mean? Said some harsh words while laughing at him. Because, like, we have the same record, so why not fight? And then uh, he took this one. Uh, I wasn't expecting him to say yes. And then he said yes, signed the contract. So it was only a month camp. So I fucking tore my body apart um, to get ready for him. And I know mentally he's he, he knows. He knows. Like, deep down he knows. He might have he might be thinking he's going to win and all that. I feel very confident. But it might have been his coach just saying no as well, too. But... Deep down, I still know he knows. So we're going to feel him out, and he's going to break. That's kind of interesting. I admittedly didn't know there was that, you know, backstory there with, like, the multiple different times it didn't pan out there. But I guess there is a degree of you guys kind of intersecting with each other because the LFA fight there you had that was canceled, I was seeing that that's the lone loss on his pro record there. So there's even that kind of crossover too, but I didn't know it went beyond that. Yeah, no, I asked for him a couple times. I watch him, and I see him, and um, I'm a catcher. And is this like a one-fight kind of contract with CFFC? Is it a multi-fight kind of agreement? One fight. We're not looking to uh, be a manager. We're just looking to get one fight wherever we can, best fights, and then contender series, hopefully November, um, or the or straight to the UFC. We're uh, looking at August for the next one. Hopefully for LFA, we heard they come back to Niagara. Not not looking past this guy, but like looking yeah. at the future, obviously. Yeah, it's a curious sport in that sense because you want to have that myopic focus on like the task at hand because there's not subsequent opportunities thereafter. But you also have to map out that plan and have that kind of confidence that you are gonna get the victory. So yeah, there's a couple facets there, I guess. So there's like a, I guess a three fight kind of arc this year you'd be looking at, like one in summer and then maybe a contender series or UFC go in the fall. Yeah. That's it. That's that's the plan right now. I was going to say being at NTT, I imagine would like help with that too. Like I mean, you're all individually growing and doing great things, but I mean, now we're seeing like Jasmine in the UFC, Aaron Jeffrey in Bellator, etc. So, yeah, I mean, working along people like that, I imagine, would help level up in that kind of regard, too. Oh, 100%. Yeah, they motivate me, but I'm self-motivated, man. Seeing all that, like, I could be at a small gym and still be motivated. It's my journey, right? I love their journey. It's like, I'm going to watch Jazz make her second UFC uh, fight in Texas, what is that june 18th i think the date is but yeah we're going to texas for a week to go watch her to me it's gonna be nice do some barbecue yeah that does sound really fun yeah i guess it's that like high tides rises all boats kind of thing though like it just seems like there's really something special in that room like obviously there's the individual effort from all of you though but yeah just cool to see yeah we're gonna be the best team in the world i mean i we just had uh we just had a lot in 
for wrestling practice, jazz, like PFC and high level athletes. Aaron's out in Stanford. Um, Romero's in here working. Like everyone's so fucking close, right? Yeah, it looks like there could be even generational greatness out of the team. Like I was seeing Jag work in the pads there and five years young, you know? Yeah, my little guy. That must be fun for you. Yeah. No, I actually, I've been doing a lot more private training the past three, four months. And um, it's blown up. Actually, I'm going to hire some new people on. Uh, a lot of the clients on my waiting list for after this fight, but too many that I can't even take on. So, uh, yeah, business is good everywhere and um i like working with jag he's the only one i have as a child right now is uh a lot of work but i wasn't gonna take him on at first and then i wanted to meet him and see he was he motivated me how motivated he was like right when i first met him he wanted it so i'm like yeah okay i'll take this kid on because five is very young right yeah, it really could go one way or the other. Yeah, like there could be that like committed interest or it could be like they do like one drill and then they're like wandering around somewhere else after. I mean, I guess you don't really know. Yeah, no, I think he's motivated. He's got good parents. They're going to guide him well in this life. And uh, now he's with me. We're just going to keep boxing. Yeah, it was fun to see that man and just, yeah, awesome time over at that gym regardless of like what your you know skill level is and stuff like that so yeah fun times for sure but i do want to be mindful of the schedule for the rest of your day man so to that point is there anything you might want to add as a parting thought as we're wrapping up tj um this guy's not making that out of the last round that uh you can bet on this one go to bet online uh they're gonna be my future sponsors so you know slip that one in there but um yeah put your money on me I'm taking him out, uh, rep- representing Niagara, Niagara top team, St. Catharines boys, and um, that's it. It's my house. I'm taking over. You'll catch me on the mic after CF- CFFC, and I'm going to let the whole world know I'm coming. I'm coming back to 35. Yeah, I was going to say you can let CM Punk know where the mic skills are at and stuff like that. I feel like he's a good gauge for that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't like CM Punk. Oh, why is that? that as, as a man <laughs> to be honest I don't know something about that guy oh I guess I wondered if it stemmed from a particular interaction or something like that just more of a general vibe kind of thing though just a general vibe he doesn't know what he's talking about if you listen to him really when he's commentating he just he bugs the shit out of me <laughs> he does man and I'm the person like no I mean if he brings good vibes I might not tell him how it is but like we'll see <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fake, right? If I don't like you, I'm not going to pretend like I like you. I'll tell you how it is to your face. I won't be rude about it, but like, you know what I mean? But if he brings good vibes and energy, then I won't even feel the need to, right? But it's just, yeah, it's not my cup of tea. No, it's fair, man. You're just being earnest about how you feel, for sure. And I think a lot of people appreciate that, for sure. Yeah, no, I'm an honest man. I try to stay honest with everything I do in life. Absolutely, and that path continues in an MMA context at the very least, and it goes down on May the 27th, CFFC 109, and people can check that out on UFC Fight Pass. I know I'll certainly be, and yeah, thanks for coming on the show, Tiche. Always a pleasure, and just, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day, man. Looking forward to peeping the fight when it goes down. You too, brother. Thank you for having me.